Hey, welcome back. It's Greg. In my last video, I tore out all of that gray polybutylene waterline you see there. This video, I'm going to be tearing out all of the white PVC and I'm going to be installing all the new PVC drain line. So uh, check it out. I've got some links to all my videos in this series down below in the summary. And enjoy. Okay, we're finally at the point where we need to start cutting out this old PVC. So we'll start up here. I'm going to make a cut right here so I can get it out of the joist. Keep in mind that's got water in the trap. I'll probably stuff a bunch of paper towels in there and try to soak up as much as possible. And then this line we're going to keep. It goes over to the other sink and there's a uh, vent that runs up the wall. So I'm going to cut it probably about right here. We'll tie it back into our new system so that's going to stay. And uh, all this goes away. Um, just to make this easier to get out and I'll probably go ahead and make another cut here. There's a toilet and all of this coming out. My next cut. And I'm going to cut down here. Probably about right here. I'm going to make sure I get my new uh, Y on there. And then just so I can get to that, since this elbow is in the way, Probably gonna cut this elbow, cut this elbow across here, just uh, so that's out of the way to make my lower cut. And then my next cut is we're gonna remove this entire piece. So my next cut is gonna be all the way down here. And just for access reasons, we're gonna cut it probably about right here just so I get my saws all in there. It really needs to be cut a little bit further up, but there's no way I can make a straight cut there, but that's fine. I can add in an extra piece of three inch if I need to. And then the only other cut I have is up here. Um, we're going to be removing this old uh, trap here. And we're going to bring this straight out. So I'm going to cut uh, above this sanitary T and then below as well. And we'll put a new sanitary T that uh, faces directly outwards because the new thing will be moved over here. So that'll come straight out. And that's it. It'll only take a few minutes to cut those with the uh, sawzall. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind is all these vents go straight up to the roof. And so if it's going to rain or if it's actively raining when you're doing this, you're going to have water coming out of your, uh, your drain lines here. So make sure there's no rain in the forecast uh, for, the, for the day, for the next couple days. I don't know how long this is going to take. And then uh, be sure to have plenty of uh, little pans underneath these lines to catch water. You don't want uh, sewer water running down onto your ceiling below, or whatever happens to be below. So you want to catch any water. Like I said, down here I'll be stuffing some paper towels in that trap to catch uh, as much of that water as possible. And then also you'll want to block off the sinks and toilet over in the other bathrooms so nobody flushes anything or pours anything down the sink because that'll just make a big mess over on this side. Uh, let's start cutting. Oh, 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 oh,
think that was the quickest part of this whole job. So I've got my three inch line open right there, which is draining to the left. And then now I've got this void all the way over to the other three inch line here. So in between this one and the one down here is where I'll have two inlets, one for the toilet and another, I'm um, gonna have another three inch wide that will be for a uh, vanity that's going here and the sink in the other bathroom and the shower which will go here. So uh, I'm actually going to come down underneath this part of the subfloor from the shower, bringing that sink over and I'll tie into the three inch line right between there and here. Okay, I would recommend marking up the wall so you know where everything is going, make sure you don't miss anything. Uh, especially when you have this many fixtures. A lot of times you'll have bathrooms that share a wall, so you have fixtures on both sides of the wall, and uh, you can have a lot of plumbing going on. So I would definitely mark up the wall. Make sure you know where all of your water lines and drains and vents are going. <laughs> First thing I'm going to do is this sink for this bathroom. We're just going to go straight through this hole and instead of trying to turn and bring it out into here and tie into here or down here, I'm actually going to drop it straight down into that existing line that's already directly underneath it. Let's see if we can see down there. So that's where it's going. And for that, I'm going to use the sweep. And now this is two inch, two by two by two. So I'm just going to mark, drop this down in here. It's going to go that way so the sweep goes the uh, direction of the uh, drain. And I'll just line it up with the hole like so. And then I'll mark my PVC down below and I'll cut it. I'm not going to record it because it's a very tight space. I can barely fit my arm in there. So uh, but I should be able to cut it and put this piece in. And our sink drain will be on its way. All right, got that in, it's quite a challenge. I got the pipe cut anyways. So we can see that's lined up there. Uh, I had to cut off a little bit more than I wanted because uh, there just wasn't enough wiggle room in there. So I'm gonna have to use a, a, a sleeve. That's the sleeve right there. And uh, so that sleeve will slide over the piece of uh, PVC that's inside the fitting. So I'll uh, cut a little section of uh, two inch to go in that end of the fitting. And then I'll put all this together and glue it in. And I'll go ahead and put in my uh, vertical piece that comes up through the floor. And I'll put in my sanitary tee here. In case you're wondering how I got to that, I ended up having to use a little scroll saw and go all the way down in there and come up underneath uh, this one drain to be able to cut it. So, not very easy, but seeing as how this was barely wide enough to uh, fit my arm, it won't even go up to my elbow. So, but if you can see it, usually there's a way you can figure out to cut it. And as I piece this together, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put my two inch piece in here coming up. Uh, I want to center my drain. This is a two by two by one and a half. It's going to be my sink drain. It'll be turned like this. So um, I want to have the center of this probably about 18 inches to 21 inches from the floor. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the uh, two inch piece that goes from here 
down to there so I can have that piece in place when I'm, when I'm uh, putting in this uh, sweep, just so I can make sure it's turned right as I glue it in. All right, so I've got primer on all of my pieces where they're gonna connect, and I'm glued in a little piece there. There, the piece is glued in, and my sleeve is in place in the pipe, so I'll be able to slide that over. I wanted to go ahead and have the, uh, the two inch piece on here just to make sure it lines up with the hole. It's not glued in yet, but uh, I did want it on in there. I guess I can go ahead and glue it in. So I'll go ahead and glue that in, and as soon as that's glued in, I'll be able to uh, drop this piece down. This piece will slide over, and then I'll glue that on, and then I'll be ready for the sleeve, and that'll be it. Right, and now it is permanent. Got the sleeve poured over there. Make sure you glue that very well on both pipes. It's a kind of a critical uh, little union there, coupling rather. And uh, so make sure you get plenty of cement all the way around. Since you can't cement the inside of the sleeve, you just have to cement the uh, PVC pipes. Uh, sometimes you could end up with a leak. So, so everything's cemented in. Got my stub up here for my sink. And then all I have to do is add this just like that. Now my sink will be done, other than the vent that will go up and tie it up there. Let's not go ahead and do that now. Okay, so now I'm going to add the vent for the sink. So I come up with this wall, I'll go through the whole time here. I already cut this pipe and uh, it took me a minute. I didn't have a saw that would really work well because it's so close to the drywall and so close to the stud. So I had to use my uh, coping saw again. But now I'm just gonna put the piece in there. So I've already got these two ends primered and I've already got the primer on my sanitary tee. It'll be turned this direction. And uh, now I just need my sleeve. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put my sleeve on. You don't want to put this together and forget the sleeve. Now I want to go ahead and cement the, uh, the bottom piece here. piece at the top is wanting to slide down so it was holding me hold me back just a little bit make sure that's lined up this is all the way down then make sure this is lined up with the hole here excellent still a little bit of movement there it's perfect I'm just going to cement both of these lines We'll just slide our sleeve down over it. There we go. Perfect. All right, now that that's done, we'll just do a uh, a straight stick across there, an elbow, and then drop right down to our sink drain. I've got my second piece cut, uh, and I can grab my level and see that it is not level. It does have a slope or foot, so if I lift this end up, you can see there it's level. It's about an eighth of an inch per foot, which well, should be fine for a um, vent, but 
Also, this isn't compressed all the way, and that's not compressed all the way. I just have them kind of test fit in here. It's not glued yet. So I'm sure as soon as I compress this and this, then this will drop more, probably to about a quarter inch per foot. So I'm going to glue them. This will be done, and we'll move on to the next thing. I'm going to move on to the main three inch line. So I'm going to, uh, the main reason I cut all of this out is because I need to jog it over so kind of this direction, bring it over to the right so I can have room for my, uh, my Y that will come over for the toilet up in this area. So the Y will be right here or it'll be back here. I'm not sure I'm going to put it in that section or that section. So that will be my shower drain, another sink drain across through the floor. But first thing I need to do is put in my 245s that will allow me to move that three inch line over, which is just going to be these two pieces. Have it turn that way. It'll stay there without rolling, and then I'll have another one turn that way. That way the line will keep going straight, but it'll be, just be jogged over about. That's probably about six inches or so, I'm not, I'm not sure, maybe five inches. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to go ahead and glue these together. I'll cut a small piece, uh, a couple inches, two and a half inches to go in there. And get that put together first because it's going to be directly under this wall and I won't be able to get to it. So I'm going to put that together first and then I'll uh, put it onto this three inch line. Now all these little lines on here have a meaning. That's, that's what helps you uh, get your piece straight when you're putting it on. So especially when you're uh, putting together 45s, you want to have these lines matched up perfectly because it can, throw, uh, it can throw off your line in the direction you want it to go. And you start getting 45s crooked and, and other uh, pieces, you can have plumbing lines going the complete wrong direction that you want to go. So um, just make sure you line those up when you put these together. So now we're ready for cement. I always put uh, cement on both, uh, both pieces that are going to be contacting each other. So I'll put it in there, uh, put cement here. Take these, put them together, and then I'll push it down just like that, and that's it. We're in. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna do this side. I just wanna have to be careful to make sure my lines are uh, lined up. And that's it. That's what you wanna have. Just a bit of nice big fitting here. That's gonna. Let my uh, three inch line jog over. Now I'm going to put together a second one of these for the other end where it has to move back over into line uh, with the other existing uh, end. So I'll go ahead and put together a second one of these and then I'll be back. All right, it looks like I missed a recording. I did go ahead and assemble the other two 45s. So you'll see that here in just a second. And then I also have already added to that a Y. Uh, three by three by three Y that I'm going to use uh, to capture the toilet drain and then I'm also going to add another three inch Y you'll see in a second uh, for the shower and sink drain that's coming from uh, the bottom of the screen so you'll see that in just a second and then I'll explain it all after I get it all together alright so that piece is all glued in. Now all I have to do is connect this three inch to the other three inch right down there. So uh, I'll be able to shift over using my other piece like this. So I'll probably put this back there and then just do a straight piece uh, right in here. Just cause it'll be a little bit easier to get to than that down there. So, all right, we'll keep moving. 
And uh, you know, I used a, um, a three inch Y here. Uh, when I originally planned this out, I thought I was gonna have two sinks and a shower draining here, but I'm only gonna have one sink and a shower. Probably could have used a, um, a two inch uh, sanitary tee, three by three by two, with a two inch in the top, but uh, went ahead and stuck with my uh, my plan for using this Y here. And then I'll just put an elbow and it'll turn and go straight through between these two joists. It'll turn like this. Just like that. And it'll run all the way up. It'll capture that sink and that shower. Right, so the main trunk line, I guess you call it, is complete. And I ended up using the uh, repair sleeve right there. So we started right here, jogs over, comes out on this side, comes across, put my fitting in here for my shower and sink, and then my fitting in here for the toilet, and then it jogs back over to the main line and goes over to the other restroom. That's it. Wasn't too bad. I just need to uh, work on the stub up for the toilet and then uh, do the shower and sink and this part will be done. Also keep chipping away at it. Alright, so now we're going to work on the toilet flange. So my first thing I need to do is figure out exactly where my flange is, where I want it to end up. And it's going to come straight up through here kind of against this uh, wall. Um, so I need to figure out how far I want it out and then how far over it's gonna be. I want it as far, as close to this wall as possible. And uh, cause this is at least 17, 18 inches, which is plenty. I think the minimum is around 15. So I'm gonna do that by measuring out here 12 and a half inches and out here 12 and a half inches. I'm actually gonna run a string across here and then I'll make sure I get my distance from the wall. You need to be 12 and a half inches from your stud wall or 12 inches from your finished wall. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do first, put a string there, and then I'll work on my, uh, my side to side, um, how it's gonna fit down in there. Okay, so I'm working on placing the top flange. There's always a few different options to get it uh, as close to the right position as possible. So here's my string. That, that'll be the center mark um, going this way. So I'll have my I'll have a four inch line coming up just like that centered on that string. So let me show you what I'm using. So this is a uh, it's kind of a a sweeping reducer four inch to three inch just made for a, a toilet flange I'm actually using a, a four inch sleeve uh, over the outside of that and then uh, I'll put a four inch pipe coming straight up out of there right up to my toilet flange uh, we'll see what that looks like here in just a little bit um, so I've got those two pieces put together and then uh, Going from here over to here, you can kind of try some different pieces. You've got 45 that's this size, and you've got a 45 that's much shorter, not a 45, but a 22 and a half, this uh, much shorter. And uh, I believe this is the one I'm going to use. It will allow me to get the uh, flange as close over this outside wall probably within about three quarters of an inch by the time it's centered in with the string so if I use this 45 I'm probably you know an inch and a half two inches away from that wall and I want it as close to the outside wall as possible so um, I'm going to go ahead and mount this in here get that glued in and then I'm just going to glue a four inch piece you can see between these two units right here and I'll just bring this all the way out move it out this direction until I get centered with this like so and then I'll measure from a piece that goes in there 
I'll cut that and then I'll just glue this all together. And then uh, when I'm setting the floor, I'll probably use a, uh, a four inch uh, stick that's too long and just set it in there just to get my floor uh, cut out. I'm gonna do, use a new piece of plywood here. Once that's cut, I'll get the height of my subfloor and then I'll pull that four inch stick back out, cut it the right length, and then I'll be ready to set my toilet flange. I will say it is very important when you're using uh, any angled pieces like this to make sure they're turned exactly uh, the right way. If they're off just a little bit and just turn like this or like this, it'll throw in turn throw this off and this will be sitting sometimes at an angle back like this or uh, turned like this when you're trying to come up to the floor for a toilet flange and that's a place where you don't want an angle you want this to be perfectly straight and plumb so um, you know typically you can use some markings this one doesn't really have any markings uh, for the center of the side here so if I can use this uh, Little, there's a little mark right there. I can use that, kind of follow that over straight to the edge. And then this piece just has the, uh, the line there from the manufacturing process. So I'll be using that to line up with this other little mark here when I glue that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and glue this so I get it pushed all the way in. That way I can get a fairly accurate measurement for my, for my four inch stick that'll go here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and glue that and we'll keep moving. Went ahead and put some marks on here. Uh, just because one, these parts get a little bit more expensive once you um, start getting into bigger pieces. And for example, this, um, I got a Home Depot, it was the last one they had and it was actually discontinued. So it actually only cost one cent, but they don't have any more. So I'd have to find, a, you know, source one elsewhere, maybe Lowe's or maybe a specialty plumbing store or online. And then, um, you know, plus you're, le you know, you're less likely to have some of these larger pieces in your uh, your stash of parts. So I went ahead and put marks on here so when I'm gluing this together, I really don't have to think about which way this is turned. Um, it's only gonna go one way. Okay, so my eyeballing was pretty close. Got the piece in there, a little three inch stick there. And then uh, comes around to 22 and a half degrees. And then my uh, elbow there, three to four inch. Then a sleeve, and then I have a four inch piece here. And uh, like I mentioned, I'll use a longer piece in here when I'm uh, putting in the subfloor. And then uh, when I'm ready, I'll pull this out, chop it the right length, and I'll put this in the flange and glue it all in after the subfloor is done. So I'm actually up tight against this, but it looks pretty level, just using my string, level enough. And uh, it's pretty close to center, maybe a, a, a tad off. So um, that should be fine. It's no more than maybe a quarter inch off. And, uh, and this, I don't think that's too tight there. Just a little bit of movement, not much to move with one hand and um, then once this is done I'll take a two by four and set underneath uh, this elbow here uh, set it on this stud just to give this um, some support so I think I'm going to glue this all together now except for this piece I'll get all those glued in and this part will be done I've got the piece glued in. Sorry I didn't catch all uh, the, the gluing and assembling on video. Uh, with it being down underneath uh, the subfloor, underneath the floor joist, I really had to be kind of right over the top of it and I uh, couldn't get it on camera too easily. So, uh, but that is in place. Uh, everything's glued except for this top piece. And uh, now we're ready to move on to the shower and sink train. Right, so I'm ready to set the height of the toilet flange. Uh, so the toilet flange needs to sit on top of the finished floor, not on top of the subfloor. So my finished floor, I'm gonna go with about a half an inch because I'm only using quarter inch um, 
cement board through a rock uh, underneath the tile. So I'm gonna go with half an inch, that'll be close enough. And uh, now I just need to make uh, the pipe underneath my flange here uh, a little bit shorter. So that'll sit down flush on that piece of drywall there. So I'll just take off uh, about an inch. This is the worst tape measure. And then, uh, then that should move my flange down enough. I'll show you what that looks like inside. So I just have that pipe sticking up there. That's not glued in yet, so I can pull that out, and then I'll, uh, I'll be able to take an inch off of it. And then my flange should sit all the way down where it needs to. Okay, it is finally time to install the toilet flange. As you can see, I've got my finished floor here, and the flange will go on top of the finished floor but it's gotta be turned a certain direction. So the uh, bolts, uh, flange bolts that'll stick out of here, I've got a, just a regular screw here. Basically they slide in and this uh, holds them in place and they'll stand straight up like that. So your bolts need to be on either side. I drew this line here, I measured 12 inches from the wall, drew a line, so that's kind of where I, I want my bolts to line up. So, my bolts will slide in here like this and move around and that's about where I want them like that. So I'm just going to mark here and where I want the bolts. Right there and then right there. So I want these to line up with the line I have here on the floor. That's about what I'm going for. If you get close with that then you're in good shape. Now the reason I mark this is because I really don't want to have to think about it when I'm trying to glue all this together. I've got this piece and this piece will go like that and this whole thing gets glued down in here. So if you can see that, my other piece is down there. So I'm just going to glue all this into place, push it all together and have it turn just like that. So next step is glue. All right, and then we're done. This is definitely close enough. I may be an eighth of an inch too far forward, but uh, as far as my goal of 12 inches from the wall, I think that's pretty good considering uh, what I started with, which was a toilet way over there. So now I'm just going to uh, run some screws through here. Remember, there's not a, uh, really not any downward pressure of anything here in the toilet sits on the floor and you just have that wax ring that sits on this so there's not a lot of pressure here you almost wouldn't need to uh, screw it down except there is some back and forth movement so you definitely want to have a screw down to prevent prevent this from moving around side to side that could over time uh, cause your wax ring to separate a little bit possibly and then you would get sewer gas so uh we'll screw this down and uh you're ready to set a toilet here soon all right, so my sinks are gonna come in here. And you know, I used a three inch wide because that's, uh, that's what I had. So uh, I am going to have to use a reducer to uh, take this from th two inches to three inches, or three inches to two inches. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is figure out about where my center line is here. And then I'll measure this. is about uh, eight and a half inches, eight and a half, eight and three quarter. I'm gonna go down here. So where I've got uh, my uh, sink line from the other bathroom that comes across and ties into this. Let's go tie into my uh, two inch line. It goes back to that three inch line. So I'm gonna measure over, figure out where I want my line down here, which is about eight and a half inches. 
It's not quite as easy with one hand as you think. Okay. All right there. So that's kind of about the line part with my uh, my two inch pipe. I think it's under here. So I am going to use. And again, it's because of what I have here. I, mean, I could use a number of things. I could use a sanitary T, but I'm going to use this Y. So the Y is going to tie in just like that. And I'll run another straight stick across here. It's going to go through that hole. So this piece is actually going to go on this side. We'll line it up with the hole there. bring this over about to that eight and a half inch mark so that is where I'm gonna want this piece see there's my mark there's my piece there there's my hole through the side and that should be it for the uh, for the sink and then my shower drain shower drain I put together here and so the drain will be this top part and go through the trap and tie into the two inch line. So it's gonna be sitting just like this. And it'll tie straight into the, the line there. So I'm gonna do the same thing where I've got, uh, I've already put some screws in here. That'll give me the center point for the drain. This one has to be pretty exact. And uh, of course the shower pan is uh, already built. And um, so I'll run my strings across there. But the good thing with this, I can adjust uh, how far this moves back and forth with this straight piece that goes in between. And then uh, since this is a trap, you know, you can you can spin it and turn it any way you want to get it uh, centered. So it should be a little bit easier. All right, so I've got these pieces glued in. Let's see underneath. Got this in place. Now I'm down to this end. Put my two inch uh, piece here, going into there. I've already got all of this glued together. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and glue this end. And as I uh, slide it on, I'll bring it to the exact right length and pop it down into here. Uh, however, I'm not going to glue that yet. Or actually, I guess I can glue it. Um, there's no reason not to. So I'll go ahead and glue both of these ends at the same time. I need a primer this. I'll glue both ends and uh, put it in place. And that connection will be final. Now the only other major part that's remaining is the shower drain. Just doing some uh, eyeballing. I think this is about the angle I'm going to need. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and cut a stick here for this, and then I'll uh, see how much wiggle room I have with twisting this uh, on here. So I'm going to get a measurement of that. here. So 
look at it from straight down. You can see what I'm seeing. So you can see it looks pretty centered on those uh, strings there, which is exactly what we want. So uh, I think that's it. I think I'm going to glue these pieces. Move on to the next step. Okay, I've got all those glued together. It's pretty close to my mark there. So um, that's it. I'll go ahead and uh, I need to look at the instructions from a shower pan and see how far uh, below the subfloor the uh, vertical piece needs to be. So I'll just do a piece of uh, two inch in here like that. Just make sure it's the right length. Let me show you what the bottom of the pan looks like. Okay, here's the bottom of the pan. So you can see how this drain is attached now. So it's got a raised uh, lip on it right here around the perimeter of the uh, drain. And then the PVC, PVC is just gonna glue right in like that. Now I am actually gonna, instead of gluing this into the trap, and setting the pan down on it, I'm actually going to glue it into the pan, like so. And then when I set the pan down, uh, I'll have this glued and the trap glued, and I'll piece these two, to, you know, this and the trap together. The only thing left now is to move this sink drain over. It's going to come straight out instead of jogging over to the right there. So that's my next little project. I'm probably not going to record that. It's up against the wall. It'll be hard to see. So I'll get that knocked out and then I'll be back. Alright, so I've got this piece glued in for the main uh, van key. So I'm ready to start on water lines. <laughs> 